I like to talk about culture being the input and behavior being the output. Behavior is what we can actually observe, but culture is what, what drives it. And there are three, I talk about the three pillars of culture. The first one is vision. This is sort of the broad statements you make, the value statements, your big strategic planning initiatives. Um, those all constitute what I call vision. The second one is structures. And this is all the processes that you set up in your organization. It's how you structure compensation. Um, it's anything that's these sort of hard, tangible process points. And then the last one is mindset. Um, and these are really the mental models, the assumptions, the biases that people in your organization have, how, what they use to approach their work every day. And unfortunately, mindset gets, gets short shrift most of the time and in fact gets overlooked a lot of the time as well. And so we change processes and we change the vision statement and we don't understand why behavior doesn't change. And unfortunately, it's because we haven't done the work to, to, to address mindset as well. Um, the way that you can understand mindsets and unpack them, there, there are a number of different ways. It's, it usually will in, include some broad sense of um, interviews and surveys to start to get a sense of how people are really approaching the work. Um, you'd be surprised when you have a certain, you know, bring a third party in to conduct some interviews that people will be pretty candid when you really get them talking about why they behave a certain way, what they really feel um, is important in terms of how they succeed in the organization. In fact, one, one bank I've worked with conducted focus groups throughout their organization, they realized there was a huge disconnect between what people believed they needed to do to succeed in the organization, what they thought it took to get promoted or to, to, get, a, to get a raise, versus what the organization wanted them to think and, and what they espoused. So I think getting that kind of granular view is incredibly important for any organization, and you will start to see the themes kind of bubble up. And then the point is to, is to really kind of refine and hone them, um, and you can come up with kind of a core set of mindsets that you believe are driving the organization. So there's an organization that I've been working with, a financial firm, um, more on the asset management side, um, and they really wanted to get critical thinking into um, their thought process for the investment process. And in particular, they wanted to make sure that people understood they would be rewarded for the deals they walked away from just as much as they would be rewarded for the deals that paid off, right? Because they really wanted that critical thinking and developing people's judgment. Um, and so they actually, on a number of, a number of cases, um, not only rewarded somebody for uh, walking away from a particular deal or saying like, look, we, we looked at this one and we ultimately decided not to do it for X, Y, Z reasons, but also for uh, being playing second chair on somebody else's deal to help them bring critical thinking to their deal and make that better. So you'd see, uh, and they even said, you know, the first time that they went through performance reviews after this kind of new system was in place, there were a lot of people that said, but but that guy, why is he getting such a great bonus? He didn't even lead any deals this year. And they said, yeah, but he second shared on these two. And he very importantly helped us walk away from this other one that we thought we were going to do. And we value that just as much as being the lead on a deal. Um, and so you, you <laughs> it, it takes the, the management making a really concerted effort to say, we're big this in and this is the way it is, you're going to have that first year or two, there's going to be growing pains because people won't understand. Even after you tell them, they won't believe you, um, but they need to see it in practice. But then people wake up very quickly. Some of the programs that I've seen that I think are the most effective are the ones that are embracing the dynamics that already exist in an organization, but for good or for the right benefit. So for example, people in financial services tend to be high achievers, they tend to be very competitive. One of the things we found in my research is that there's a very strong competitive streak, not a surprise to anybody in financial services, but the surprise to me was that it's actually on its own, just pure competition actually has a positive dynamic to it. Um, it is not a bad driver, and it can be associated with building longer-term customer relationships, um, thinking more about how you're working for the good of the firm overall, not just yourself. So there are actually some good dynamics in there. Um, the challenge is how do you harness that competition for the other values goals that you might have? And so there's one bank that started filming their executives. They started with the C-suite, and then it's kind of trickled down, filming executives talking about an ethical dilemma that they faced um, and, and really trying to use you know candid stories that are really part of the fabric of the firm um, and taping a story and then they posted them to their kind of internal site and it became a competition for whose story got the most clicks, whose video got the most clicks. And then more more executives said, well, I want to record a story also because I want to get, you know, see how many clicks I can get, uh, how many views I can get. Um, and it really became, it started to snowball through the organization. And I think, again, it's a really positive way that people are talking about ethics and values and culture, uh, but harnessing one of the dynamics that already exists.